very welcome to uh, Gadja here. Uh, and I, I think we did the last interview with you about uh, three years ago. Yeah. When we right. were just about mm. starting the Gadja Cafe TV. Yes. And you were probably the first to be <laughs> interviewed. <laughs> yes, I think, that, I think that's right. Yes. And you talked about, uh, this is uh, Ian and Diana, and they are here to talk about their project in Kenya. Yeah? Yes. So yeah. tell us a little bit about uh, uh, the Kenyan project. This is Riziki Children's Home in, uh, well, just outside Nakuru in central Kenya. We take in needy orphans and uh, um, boys and girls and uh, they are well looked after at Riziki and provided with an education as well as the means of actually living. Most of the children do have distant relatives. A few actually have living parents or grandparents who are totally unable to look after the children. And so children are um, recommended by the government's children's department. They are then um, committed to Riziki through a court of law and we become their guardians in practical terms. And this is uh, in Nakuru? Just outside Nakuru, about half an hour outside the city, um, uh, heading north towards the tourist areas of Lake Beringo and Begoria. Yeah. I know that there is a video already, uh, you know, we had this interview, so you have given a lot of information about uh, how, we, how, we, how it all began. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very fascinating, uh, uh, you know, story of how you sort of got involved. I know you worked in uh, Africa before, both of you were missionaries or teaching. Uh, teaching, or a teaching very long Africa. time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, I, I've known you uh, <laughs> for a long time, for pro yes. probably about 30 odd years now. Uh, so it's nice to be able to interview you today. Uh, so d tell us how many sort of uh, children are in this children's home? We're looking after about 27 children. Some of them are now too old to be residents of the children's home because the government does not allow children over the age of 18 to be residents in a children's home. However, as some of them don't start their education until they're perhaps eight or nine years old, by the time their education is complete, they are well over the age of 18. And so we still continue to support them through secondary school, through college, until they are independent enough to be self-sufficient. So you have had this school uh, for about nine years. The, the home opened nine years ago. So um, the oldest will be... The oldest is well in her 20s. Okay. <laughs> and um, uh, when she finished her secondary school, she was already over the age of 18. And immediately she finished her secondary school, she was deregistered from Riziki. And that will happen to the other children when they pass 18 and have completed their secondary education. But we shall still support them through their one course at college. Excellent. And uh, do they come back to help you as well after they sort of finish with you? They will come back socially, but yeah. uh, possibly, but um, not to do anything constructive as yet. Okay. It may be that in the future, yeah. um, children who will then be young adults will be able to come and take part in the work at Riziki, but that will depend on what they choose for a career. I know that uh, there is an orphanage uh, in India that uh, one of our local you know, uh, people actually run. They mm. helped to set it up about probably 25 years ago. Yeah. And uh, the second generation of people are helping uh, yeah. run. And they have actually uh, sort of started a, a different uh, or second or third you know, uh, orphanages in, uh, in India. Mm. And it's uh, really being uh, helped by people who actually went through uh, the yeah. orphanage. I think so you find that where children have um, really appreciate the opportunities they've had, yeah. that they do go into children's work. We do know ourselves one yeah. or two instances of that, particularly in reference to the homes with the bit and elder. Act. 
So, excellent. I, I know we have some pictures that we can actually show, uh, some videos that you have done yeah. while, while uh, being there. Uh, so we can show you uh, uh, some images of, uh, this, of the home as well. Uh, so tell us a little more about uh, how you actually run this home and how you support well, the, the, the home is run as a home for Africans. <coughs> it is run by Kenyans. We do nothing in the administration of it because uh, European ideas very often conflict with African ideas and the African ideas are the correct ones for yeah. African children. However, we are heavily involved in the fundraising because although we would like the home to be completely self-sufficient, that is more difficult to do than it is to say. So we are aiming for self-sufficiency and the biggest problem we have faced in getting self-sufficiency is water. Mm. And we have tried to get mains water without success. We've tried to drill a borehole which um, uh, did not reach water even after 250 meters and we are left therefore with collecting whatever water we can and storing it. We collect all the rainwater that falls on the roofs of the buildings and we now collect water that runs down the adjoin adjacent road which is very dirty brown water but we collect it and store it in a huge dam which will contain 800 cubic meters and we can use that for irrigation in our plan to become self-sufficient. Excellent. And you also do uh, cultivation and, you know, you're uh, growing your own vegetables. Yes. Yep. Yes, we have plenty of land uh, on the farm part and that is used for growing maize, beans and what we call local vegetables. There's a variety of vegetables that are very popular with the local people and we grow those to feed the children and for sale. Right. We, al we also grow um, cattle food as well because <coughs> at certain times of the year it's very expensive to buy. So Liz, who is Julius's daughter, who is passionate about the farm, um, she has set up a system for growing almost enough um, feed, lucerne grass and things like that right. to feed the cattle. And what sort of vegetables, these local vegetables that you grow? Um, <laughs> I won't know very <laughs> much about it. But uh, spider plant, amaranth, uh, cow peas, black nightshade, sounds revolting. <laughs> but, uh, um, and there's a, there's a very good local market and we know it's uh, that's the case from other people we've talked to that the Kenyan people want yeah. local vegetables rather than things like broccoli and cabbage. Well, they do eat cabbage quite a lot, but uh, they'd rather have their own, what we call local vegetables. Yes. I noticed that uh, they eat something like uh, uh, a white, uh, like rice, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. <laughs> they is eat, uh, the basic staple food yeah. is ugali, ugali, which is a very solid maize porridge. Um, mm. And this is eaten in large quantities with usually some spinach or what we call sukuma wiki which is a, a form of cabbage and occasionally with a small amount of meat with the gravy to um, make it more flavoursome mm -hmm. um, but that is very common throughout Kenya the maize meal is used for that. And I also noticed that you you actually uh, they were making uh, these uh, flat breads. Chapatis. Chapatis. Yes, yes um, Chapatis are very popular with the, the children and with adults. So is it very much like the Indian chapati? Yes. I would think yeah. it's yes. very similar to the very Indian similar. chapati. There's a lot of yeah, they look very influence. similar, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they make their own porridge as well, which is, right. um, we make that from sorghum, sweet potato, cassava, maize and a little bit of sugar. So we're growing all those things. So we can take the grains off to the mill to be ground um, it is our hope eventually to have our own grinder mm -hmm. and then we can grind other people's um, mm. maize, can't we? Yes, we're also yeah. looking at growing a, a plant called canola. The name comes from uh, Canada and oil put together, which is similar to rape, rapeseed, and 
the idea is that we would then be able to produce our own oil and possibly sell the oil as well. Mm -hmm. It grows very well in Kenya, apparently. Right. The local agricultural departments are encouraging local farmers to do this. Yeah. Um, so we'll follow that up when we're there next. <laughs> Whatever they eat, I think they are very energetic, aren't they? The children yes. are. Yes, they are typical young people with yeah. boundless energy. Yeah. I think if you had some cows looking for footballers, you'll find them there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They are fantastic. I, oh, I yes. Thought Their dexterity um, is to quite a high level. Yeah. With one little boy, he may not play football, but he can roll a car tyre all around the compound just using a stick to control it, yeah. and he can actually do two at the same time. Yeah. Now, I would have a job <laughs> to keep one going. <laughs> And it's nice to see that they have got plenty of room and plenty of facilities within the within yes. the home itself that they can actually use. Yes. And when it's yeah. holiday time, yeah. the children do get involved in planting and harvesting. Right. And I sat with them uh, taking maize from the cobs because there wasn't enough to justify hiring a machine. And we just sat round in a circle, happily, you know, uh, decobbing the, the maize. Um, so they. They have a certain responsibility yeah. for home life. It's by choice, though. Yes, nobody nobody do. makes no, them do it. They do it because they to want it. to. Mm -hmm. And they seem to be enjoying themselves yeah, in yeah. arts and crafts yes. and music. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes Music's very they're important. They're very good mm -hmm. at singing as a group. Yes. Um, they ha don't seem to have any formal training or lots uh -huh. and lots of practicing, but they do have the ability to entertain in song. Yes. Uh, very As we have singer. seen uh, in a lot of the African children's choirs that we yes, visit in the yes, UK. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do a lot of singing in the church, of course. Right. Uh, the local church have welcomed them extremely well, make us welcome when we go too. It's a little Anglican church, uh, um, but a very warm congregation, mm. aren't yes. they? Mm. Mm. So they have a, a Christian background. Yes. Yes, the education. Yeah. Yes, they, yeah. they have um, a time of worship and fellowship every evening, mm -hmm. just at a quarter of an hour. And usually the children lead that themselves with a small amount of supervision, but um, uh, not an awful lot of direction. They are very good at learning the Bible stories and yeah. enjoy doing it. Very good. And in terms of uh, funding this whole operation. It must be quite a task trying to get some funding for this. It I know you're trying yes. to be self-sufficient, but yes. you probably need all the, the money that you can get. We do indeed. <laughs> um, there are ooh, two, three perhaps main expenses. The first is the basic cost of feeding and clothing and paying the wages of the staff. And we have quite a lot of small donors who provide enough funds to get us well on the way to that. We do a little fundraising ourselves once a year to raise a significant amount of money, but uh, for general living we have to rely on the generosity of our supporters. Mm -hmm. We do have one or two people who will pay some of the larger bills because education is very expensive. Technically Primary education in Kenya is free in the government schools, but the nearest government school to Riziki was not really um, of a high enough quality, we felt, to make it worth supporting children to send them there. And so they now go to a Christian private school and have a much better education. Mm -hmm. Secondary education uh, is, an, is not funded by the government and that has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. But we've been very fortunate to have uh, donors who will specifically support the, the expenses of sending them to school. So what sort of things do you do? In I, I know you ask people to donate if uh, they can, uh, uh, but uh, any other activities that you do? Well, we never appeal directly for funds, but I do send out, or we send out, a newsletter every mm -hmm. Um, one month or two months and state in that what the problems are, what the good things are, everything about the home and usually when we mention the need for money someone or several people will end up providing the money that we want. This happened 
Um, one of our supporters paid for the fence that surrounds the property. Somebody paid for the um, digging the dam mm -hmm. and enabling us to collect the rainwater. Uh, we've had another person has offered to pay for the new cow shed that we need and that is about to start it, if it has not already started to be built so things like this the major expenses we always yeah. find that someone will contribute to them if we're meant to have them yes yeah. Yeah. so mm -hmm. how would someone actually uh, subscribe to your newsletter so that they can be in contact with you or or want to contact you uh, directly to we to donate or do anything for you we can be contacted through our website which um, you can access at riziki.org.uk. Yeah, we can put that on our yes. YouTube as well. Or if you Google Riziki at Nakuru, you will get get the correct Riziki children. And home. how do you spell Nakuru? N <laughs> Nakuru is N-A-K-U-R-U, and Nakuru is one of the five biggest cities within Kenya, so it's a very well-known place to people interested in bird life. Um, right very famous for the flamingos on Lake yeah. Nakuru. I know we have done some coffee mornings in, in various places uh, yeah. for Riziki. Uh, do you do anything in, uh, I know you, you took a coffee machine uh, to, to Kenya. Uh, are you wanting to do some sort of local fundraising and getting people involved there? I well, I think well. it would be difficult to do it in a very poor rural area where mm -hmm. Riziki is. Um, because very much you, people are living from day to day around the children's home and from time to time Julius does help people particularly if there's a funeral we might provide water this sort of thing um, the coffee machine that you kindly gave us we gave to a very dear friend in Nairobi because she has a passion for helping um, women and small women's groups who are involved in making crafts she helps them to make their crafts to a high enough standard to sell in the tourist shops. So her idea is to um, ask for donations when she provides coffee uh, when her customers come in to the shop. Excellent. You might have to ask me to go there to do some barista training. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're very well. That would be nice. Yeah. We, were, we were very pleased that she could follow all your instructions <laughs> and the, that it, the machine was up and running. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. So I, I think good. it's nice to be able to uh, do small things like this because yes. uh, I know we are mm. trying to do certain things here yeah. in the UK yeah. and trying to sort of uh, get people to make coffees because it's a nice uh, social activity yeah. Yeah. and we have uh, plenty of uh, machines mm -hmm. that we can actually try and uh, sort of especially for charities we will be happy to uh, do something with yeah. and uh, I, I've already sort of done uh, a few things with uh, charities in fact uh, I think we talked about it there is a place in uh, Nepal that actually has a cafe it's called yeah. the cafe without a name and yeah. they have two of our small machines yeah. and uh, they are making coffees for people in the cafe for expats yes. uh, and raising money for uh, street children so mm. it's quite a nice mm -hmm. way of mm. I think uh, sort of uh, you know uh, raising yeah. raising money yeah. for uh, for your cause mm. so yeah. thank you thank you very much for coming in uh, mm. do you want to say anything else about uh, uh, about the Riziki about the yeah I think the thing that struck me, particularly when you feel down and wondering how you're going to meet the next bills, is I'm brought back to the fact that the children that have come through have been transformed. I'm thinking of one boy in particular who's just gone off to boarding school. And to have watched him develop and the transformation in his mm -hmm. personality and development and to see him caring for the younger children it makes it all seem worthwhile, worthwhile. Um, and it's a delight to Ian and I that we've heard from Julius that these four new children have come in, um, three of whom have got no living parents and um, the little girl, uh, sadly her mum's in prison for neglect, um, I think the neighbours got involved um, because she wasn't being looked after. Um, they look beautiful children on their pictures. Mm -hmm. And so with love and yeah. the right food and the right mentoring, uh, hopefully they'll go far. Yeah. 
And, um, and we know that some of the older children have written to Julius in the past, haven't they? Yes. Thanking him for what the opportunities they've had. Yeah. And, it's and they've not done that, that without any yeah. um, uh, encouragement. It's not that, they, that you want thanks, but it's good that they appreciate the opportunities they're being given. Yeah. And they do care for each other, don't Very they? Very much so. You, you don't see them fighting. They just behave like a um, large family. The only time yeah. we had problems was when they went to this local primary school. And we'd noticed Julius was often counselling them on the veranda if we were there. And then it came out later that a lot of the problems were because of the problems in the school. Yeah. Um, and so it was at this point we had to take a leap of faith and send them to a, a better school, mm -hmm. which has been worthwhile, even though it's a, a lot financially. But so you just hope you're helping a yeah. few to do well. I think it has been really enjoyable talking to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming in and uh, giving us a bit more information. <laughs> and we are uh, very pleased that we are able to, uh, you know, broadcast this to our audiences because we have lots of people coming on to buying coffee machines. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Nothing to do with uh, Kenya. But I think it will be nice for them to know uh, that this exists and anyone can help people who are in need. Yes. So I'm and hoping that, yes. Through you, Rajan, anybody can be put in touch with us if they want to yes. be. You yes. have our email or phone number. Yeah. Yeah. We shall try and open up mm. a subscription list for uh, for Riziki. I think then we can pass on. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, with all these regulations of how to use uh, information, it it will be difficult. Yes. But I think it will be useful to have that for you, isn't it? You yes. can actually open up a yes. list. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much thank indeed, you. and thank, thank you for you watching, and uh, thank you to Ian and Diana.